Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome to my carbine guide for Battlefield 4. In this video, I'll be covering the stats and information of the carbines of the game, and why the G36C is a straight up piece of garbage. And as you're probably expecting, you can find a table of contents in the description below if you'd like to navigate to individual carbines instead of watching the entire video. And please forgive me if you disagree with my pronunciation of carbine versus carbine. According to my research, it's derived from a French word that is somewhat similar to carbine, but if I'm not mistaken, you could say it either way, but I may oscillate between the two. One thing that you should know in case that you are unfamiliar is that the carbines can be used by any class, whether assault, engineer, support, or useless, I mean recon, sorry. Also too, much like the previous guide covering the assault rifles, the carbines had the same body part multipliers, as in a 2.0 damage multiplier to the noggin or the dome piece, also known as the head, a 1.0 damage multiplier to the chest or the arms, and a 0.93 multiplier to the stomach or the legs. Of course, if the adversary you are shooting happens to be running the defensive spec, which he probably is, he takes a decreased amount of damage in the chest region, dropping the multiplier down to 0.93 times. I mean. It doesn't make him into a juggernaut by any means, but he's certainly stuffing socks in there or something, so he's at least marginally better at getting shot in the chest. I don't know if that's a skill that you should brag about, but another note is that throughout the guide, I'll be mentioning maximum and minimum damages, and that's all dependent on the distance between the rando you are shooting and you. And for all the carbines, the distances are the same. As in, if you are shooting an enemy within 8 meters of you, you'll do maximum damage, and if you're shooting an enemy at or beyond 50 meters from you, you'll do minimum damage, with a sliding scale of damage in between those two specific points. Now moving on to attachments, I would like to clearly state right now that the attachments that I recommend are purely my opinion for what will perform well for the majority of users. It's by no means a perfect suggestion for every single user, and catering your attachments to the game type player count and playstyle, your specific playstyle, is extremely important. So it's not just this bar none, use this set of attachments in every situation. You should definitely change it and adapt it to the specific situation that you find yourself in. And I will also only recommend attachments that change the stats of the weapon. I won't be commenting on optics because they are largely a personal preference, and I pretty well just run Coyote and Red Dot on virtually everything anyway, so that wouldn't be all that useful. And with all that boring information out of the way, let's dive into some individual weapon discussion while watching killstreaks that took me forever to record. To start us off, we have the MTAR-21. The MTAR-21 is a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18, firing at a rate of 900 rounds per minute with a tactical reload time of 2.5 seconds and an empty reload time of 3 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Now the first thing that you should know is that if you have your heart set on taking down your enemies as quickly as possible while using a carbine, look no further. I mean, this thing kills faster than any other carbine with a damage model that is almost identical to the AEK, believe it or not, with the same rate of fire, yet a slightly different damage over range. However, the advantage that the MTAR has over, you know those guns that I call chainsaws, you know that basically the rate of fire is so high that they can cut things in half? The advantage that the MTAR has over so many of those other weapons is that it's a bullpup. Essentially what that means is that it has extremely tight hip fire and is much more accurate than conventional carbines and other assault rifles while on the move. So if run and gun is the name of the game for you, I can highly recommend this weapon, but the downsides that come along with this massive raw killing potential in the form of damage and rate of fire include a cluster recoil that can make it very difficult to take down enemies over range, and both a tactical and empty reload time that are less than desirable at 2.5 seconds and 3 seconds respectively. I mean, I guess some will argue that it's good at range because it has slightly higher minimum damage than nearly all of the other carbines, or carbines, but I think that's not really all that relevant. Although it's not impossible to get kills over medium range, you're much better off running around like a madman with this weapon than attempting to set a new headshot record or something. The attachments that I recommend are either a suppressor for maximum stealth, or a compensator for decreased horizontal recoil, any of the laser sights for better hip fire spread, but we all know tri-beam laser, triple the lasers, triple the swag, and the ergo slash vertical grip for less spread while firing on the move, because run and gun is the name of the game, alright? That's what you excel with when you use the MTAR, plain and simple. The next weapon we have is the ACWR. 
The ACWR has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 880 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 1.83 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.37 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Now, the ACWR is pretty similar to the MTAR in terms of its role as a super high damage output carbine, so here's how the two stack up. The ACWR kills slightly slower than the MTAR at close range, as it has the same max damage, yet fires 20 rounds per minute slower. It also has worse hip fire and is less accurate while firing on the move, because obviously, it's not a bullpup. It happens to have similar recoil patterns, and it's also similar to the MTAR, with the extremely high spread increase per shot, as in, I've mentioned this previously, but this is the way it works. If you fire it full auto, it gets really inaccurate much faster than the other carbines, but here's what it does better. Number one, it reloads so much faster, and I know that isn't necessarily enough to convince all of you to switch from the popular MTAR, it's not just perfect bait for you, but just having the ability to take down a few enemies quickly, swap mags, and proceed to get even more, I'm implying this, but double and triple kills afterwards is totally worth it. Especially when it comes down to tactically reloading, because the ACWR reloads nearly, nearly a second. Technically it's 0.7 seconds, but 0.7 seconds faster than the MTAR, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but with close quarters orientation, and like basically what's this built for, for just close quarters combat, it will make all the difference, at least in my opinion. For attachments, I recommend something similar to the MTAR, as in a suppressor for stealth or compensator for horizontal recoil benefits, a laser sight, of course, and an ergo slash vertical grip for decreased spread while firing on the move, because obviously it's another run and gun. The next weapon on the list is the SG553. The SG553 has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 830 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.15 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.65 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Now, I know you're gonna laugh at me, but I literally call this weapon the Barbie, solely for the reason that you can make it into so many different things depending on the attachments that you put on it. First of all, the rate of fire at 830 rounds per minute and favorable reload times are enough to make it viable in close quarters. Now granted, don't think it's a chainsaw, alright? It's not from our status. Don't get carried away here, but it will allow you to emerge victorious from the majority of close range engagements that you will happen to find yourself pickled up in. But also too, if you use it correctly, and it, it took me a while to even get used to this, that range though, I did not even realize. It has a more rightward recoil compared to the cluster recoil of so many other high rate of fire carbines, so it's easier to control over longer distances. It's very weird to get used to how great it is over distance. You can make this even easier by using attachments such as the stubby or potato grip and the compensator for massive recoil benefits, and if you're feeling extra special or MLG Pro or just Kia in general, even a heavy barrel and angled slash folding grip set up, I mean, I guess it could work if you're skilled at controlling recoil already, but really the reason that you do it is the spread decrease is magical. But I do have to warn you, you do have to be pretty skilled at managing your recoil for that setup to work. Hell, you can even go with like an ergo vertical grip and a suppressor for a stealth class. So now you know what I mean when I call it the Barbie. Just make sure that you can actually use the attachments that you are slapping on it. However, my personal recommendation to you is the stubby or potato grip, compensator, and the laser sight to make it deadly in a variety of situations. I think that should work magic for the majority of you. The next weapon up for discussion is the A91. The A91 has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 800 rounds per minute with a tactical reload time of 2.7 seconds and an empty reload time of 3.3 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. And I'm going to try my best not to bag on this thing, but really, the only thing that it has going for it are the spread advantages of being a bullpup. So, although it's great from the hip and while firing on the move, everything else is pretty terrible. Like for example, let me explain myself, let's compare it to the SG553. When you break it down, the A91 has the same damage and magazine size, yet a worse rate of fire, worse reload times, and worse recoil. It's just like so many other situations where my brain just explodes thinking, Alan Kurtz, why did you even make the A91 when you have the SG553, my man? It's like, there is little, if any, incentive to use it when the SG553 exists. Just those little bullpup advantages, like they don't make it that much better. Like it doesn't make it justifiable to use the A91 over the SG553. It's just silly. A bullpup does not make it that much more appealing. The recoil on this thing is especially bad, making medium range kills fairly difficult. However, I'll at least give it credit. 
Due to the high rate of fire and damage model, you may happen to have some success if you slap a suppressor on this thing because it can be a nifty stealth class, but still, I would recommend the SG-553 in nearly every situation apart from maps requiring ridiculous hip fire, which is very few. But if you're still set on using it, I highly recommend the Compensator to deal with the awful horizontal recoil, a laser sight for hip fire benefits, and the potato slash stubby grip for additional spread benefits. The next weapon on the list is the M4. The M4 has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 800 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 1.85 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.4 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. And I have to say, when I started using this thing, I thought it was going to be awful, yet I was pleasantly surprised. Not only is this thing deadly, but I can use it in a variety of different roles with great success. So number one, it's got an amazing reload, nearly the fastest of all the carbines. It's also got predictable recoil that pulls to the right, unlike the cluster recoil of most of the other carbines. And I'm not sure why, but slapping a burrito, Qdoba, queso, super suppressor on here actually worked quite well. It was stealthy enough to make me stay off the minimap, yet the three round burst made it somewhat viable at range. I'm not saying it's like a sniper rifle straight M98 Bala performance at range, but it was enough to get the job done. So although I happen to be having success with the suppressor, the burst fire carbines usually work really well with the angled slash folding grips and heavy barrel or even no barrel attachment at all. I mean, just working to minimize spread will bring you mounds of success with the M4, especially if you're skilled at controlling upward recoil. As such, I would recommend either the potato slash stubby grip for spread benefits or the angled slash folding grip if you have trouble managing recoil, the heavy barrel, and laser sight for most users who are choosing to play more conservatively with this weapon, but you can go hard in the paint. I mean, with the burst fire, you still have 800 rounds per minute, so I mean, I guess you can go CQB if you want, and the reload is definitely on your side. Although, if you were interested, the attachments that I was using here in this specific footage was the suppressor, laser sight, and vertical grip, which is really helpful for staying off the minimap, obviously, because must suppressor, must stealth, must splinter cell, and having better spread while firing on the move due to the vertical grip. The next weapon to discuss is the Ace-21 CQB. The Ace-21 CQB has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 770 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.1 seconds and an empty reload time of 3.1 seconds, holding a max capacity of 36 rounds. And although I've said in the past that no one cares how many ace kills you have, the Ace-21 is certainly a weapon that you must try if you haven't already. I'm not even calling- I'm not even gonna call you any names if you do use it. I mean, just try it, man. It's a jack-of-all-trades that virtually anyone can pick up and destroy with because it's so balanced in every aspect of its being. I mean, think about it this way. It has a decent rate of fire and reload time, making it viable in close quarters, yet the recoil is also mild enough, especially compared to other carbines, so it's deadly at range with the right attachments. And the real kicker here is it has a capacity of 36 rounds. And I know in most cases, well, five rounds isn't a colossal difference, but because this thing is so deadly, I usually survive long enough to utilize every single shot that I'm given, including the five additional rounds compared to most of the other carbines. It's just one of those things that you don't truly grasp it until you use the weapon extensively, and then you're just, you're just gonna have this magical moment where you're like, Badger, you sly dog! Now I get exactly what you were trying to say. I get it now. Like, the light bulb is turned on. I get it. As for attachments, I personally recommend the angled slash folding grip because I like to make it into a laser beam with less first shot recoil, a laser sight, and a muzzle brake for less recoil. Just be careful about the spread when going full auto, and try to stick to short bursts if you can. The next weapon is a favorite of many, the AK-5C. The AK-5C has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 700 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 1.85 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.35 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Now, the real highlight of this weapon is the general usability and convenience in a variety of different situations. So, just to give you the rundown, number one, the reload times are outstanding. It even has the fastest empty reload time of all the carbines. The recoil is also very easily managed as it's not only more vertically oriented than the other carbines, but it's also mild overall. So there's no doubt in my mind that you will have an easy time staying on target. It also has the lowest first shot recoil multiplier of all the carbines. Um, 
I'm gonna stop talking about the Great Recoil now because I think you already grasped that it's a laser beam. However, you may notice that you're outgunned in many situations when it comes to close quarters. 700 rounds per minute is not necessarily terrible when it comes to close range engagements, but it's also by no means ideal. It's certainly no match for a chainsaw like the Moss or the AK. I tend to play a more conservative style when I use the AK-5C, but you guys, I know enough of you guys are skilled enough to make it work for a variety of different situations, including CQB, so I'll leave that one up to you guys. For attachments, I recommend the muzzle brake for even less vertical recoil, the potato slash stubby grip for wonderful spread benefits, and of course, the laser sight. The next weapon we have is the AKU-12. The AKU-12 has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 680 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.05 seconds and an empty reload time of 3 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Now the first thing to keep in mind is that this weapon has a higher rate of fire under burst fire at 750 rounds per minute instead of the 680 rounds per minute under full auto, and I strongly recommend staying in burst mode at all times with this thing. And I know I've referred to several of the previous carbines as having mild recoil, but you'll notice that this thing is like next level mild recoil, and you'll see it as soon as you start using it. It's like cheesing as soon as you start firing. Not only is the recoil super light, but it doesn't feel like you're popping popcorn when you're firing like other carbines or carbines. It's like, I don't feel like my reticle is just bouncing all over the screen. It's a predictable pattern pulling comfortably up and to the right, and not surprisingly, it's a beast at medium range, especially with the right attachments. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's terrible in close quarters, but keep in mind that you'll need a decent trigger finger to make the burst fire worth it in those tight situations. And for attachments, I strongly recommend that you make everything about reducing spread so that you can nearly, nearly go burst to burst and still make your bullets into laser beams at medium range. As such, I recommend the heavy barrel, or believe it or not, no attachment or even a flash hider can work well. As long as it doesn't increase the spread, it's usually very effective. You're going to want the angled slash folding grip for better recoil and of course a laser sight. The next weapon we have is the Ace 52 CQB. The Ace 52 CQB has a max damage of 34 and a minimum damage of 20, firing at a rate of 650 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.2 seconds and an empty reload time of 3.1 seconds, holding a max capacity of 26 rounds. And this weapon is completely built around it having a much higher bullet damage per shot than other carbines. This makes it not only great at taking down multiple enemies, but also wonderful at range. But here's what you're not going to enjoy. Number one, the magazine size is smaller than the other carbines. Now granted, although you have less bullets, you do have more damage per bullet. So that can make up for it, just be aware that you have five shots less than most of the other carbines. Number two, the reload time is pretty average, so that combined with the aforementioned smaller magazine size is something to keep in mind so you don't get shot in the face while changing mags. The recoil is extremely strong vertically and moderate horizontally, and it has the highest spread increase per shot of all the carbines. Just remember that under full auto, it gets extremely inaccurate extremely quickly. Short bursts are your best friend when using this thing. It can also be great CQB, if you're accurate due to the high bullet damage, but the rate of fire can be frustrating and very unforgiving if you miss your first shot or two, unlike something like the FAMAS or the AK, where you can miss like your first five shots and still easily win the gunfight. In terms of attachments, I recommend maximum recoil reduction with the muscle brake for less vertical recoil, the angled slash folding grip for less first shot recoil addition, and the laser sight. The next weapon on the list is the Type 95 B1. The Type 95B has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 650 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.75 seconds and an empty reload time of 3.4 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. Starting with the upside of this weapon, it has a mild recoil configuration, which is very easy to control, a very favorable spread pattern due to the bullpup configuration, essentially meaning that it's got great hip fire and is excellent at firing on the move. Due to the rate of fire, it's also proficient at medium range, but that's about it for the positive characteristics. Here is what you are not gonna like. That's that I don't like. Number one, the reloads are terrible. The slowest of all the carbines. Number two, the rate of fire is really low and will nearly always get you dunked on in close quarters by anybody that has, I don't know, a functioning liver, depth perception, and a pulse. So beyond the stats right now, if I'm just talking to you man to man, this thing is no good. 
It's not amazing enough at range to make it a go-to weapon because the reload time is so awful. And if someone tries to sneak up on you, there's no way you're going to win that gunfight with 650 rounds per minute, at least the majority of the time. So I can't say that I personally recommend this weapon. But if you do insist on using it, I recommend the heavy barrel to minimize spread. And if you can effectively manage the recoil on your own as well. The potato stubby grip for more spread benefits, and of course, the laser sight. Try me Master Race reporting in. The final weapon on the list is an abomination that Alan Kurtz really should have just removed from the game, which is called the G36C. The G36C has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 15.4, firing at a rate of 650 rounds per minute, with a tactical reload time of 2.1 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.85 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. And allow me to start off by saying this weapon is not effective. I mean, it just isn't. Think, think about it, alright? If I'm going to be using a carbine with a low rate of fire, like 650 rounds per minute, I want to have some seriously good recoil and the ability to take down enemies from range. But, but wait a minute, if the A-52 has the same rate of fire, yet it has a way better damage output at 34 max damage and 20 minimum damage, why does the G36C even exist? Now I'm sure you can come back and argue, wait Badger, the G36C hits 5 more rounds in a magazine and better recoil. Well number one, if you're using anything effectively at range, you're probably bursting it effectively to some extent which can render most of your recoil irrelevant if you manage it correctly. And number two, what does the G36C having 5 more rounds in a mag compared to the Ace 52 even matter if you never survive long enough with the G36C to even fire them all? You're not going to empty your magazine, bro. It's just, it's too underwhelming in close quarters, not outstanding at medium ranges, and offers no other redeeming qualities. It's like Knights of the Old Told Republic in here or something. So in comparison to all the other carbines, it's terrible. I recommend that you steer clear. But to remain on the positive side of the energy circle here, I suggest that DICE <coughs> Alan Kurtz... Uh, F Excuse me, I just had a, a massive cough attack. <laughs> I suggest that DICE either ups the rate of fire or makes the recoil more favorable. Even a reload time tweak would be more effective, but as it stands, this thing is not well balanced. Did for attachments, if you really feel like using this thing, I recommend a compensator for less horizontal recoil, the angled slash folding grip for less first shot recoil addition, and the laser sight. And that's about it. That's all that I have to say about the carbines. If you have any kind of recommendations for which guide I should do next, I, I think most of you want the LMGs or the PEWs at this point, please leave a comment below and I will take it into consideration. But other than that, I, will, uh, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und Vader!